Yeah. That was great. That was, uh, yeah, that was something. Let's get out of here. Yeah, that's it. Nathan? Yeah. Pleasure. Um, we'll call you next time we want you on the podcast. Yeah. So, oh, we'll, we'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, we'll, we'll, call, we'll call you, check your email. It'll be good. Whatever. Oh, guys, before you go, I got some notes that I think could make the next episode better. Oh. Uh, thanks, Nathan. We, uh, will take this into consideration. Yeah. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Welcome to Real Late Night Talks episode two. Welcome back. Oh yeah. I'm your host Nathan and I'm joined here by my lovely co-host. Matthew. My name's Todd. <laughs> but I'm still Todd episode still two. Still Todd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on today's episode, we're going to talk about Martin Scorsese films. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. This is going to be a good one. One of my personal favorite directors of all time. Yep. And uh, I think there's a lot to talk about here. Um, let's start off with um, with um, you, your guys' introduction to Scorsese. Scorsese, yes. Scorsese is one of those filmmakers that uh, really, really changed my... I, I think the first film I watched was Goodfellas mm-hmm. from him. That was the one that really just woke me up. I was like, damn, like the way it was edited, I've never seen something so like chaotic yet so like... I, it made it made filmmaking look so easy. Yeah, that's what I noticed, especially it just really like the dialogue did. and stuff like that. It really did. Oh my god! And the music too. I fucking love the music in that film. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, my first Scorsese film was a uh, was a little little indie film called uh, oh Shark Tale. I shut the fuck up. <laughs> you guys know she, he's in Shark Tale. Puff right? Daddy. Yeah. 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 No, my um my introduction <laughs> to Scorsese was actually when I first the first time I got like when I got big into films was when I watched The Godfather. And I remember telling Matthew and Christian this because Chris and I had um, data management together. Mm-hmm. And it was Christian that told me, dude, you got to watch Goodfellas. Yeah. And I never watched it because I never had time to watch it until like a couple years ago. I finally sat down and watched it. And th- I remember it was like, I always got like halfway in. And I, I, I remember one time I like fell asleep. <laughs> Another time mm-hmm. I just didn't have time. But then I finally watched it in its entirety. And I was like, Wow. Yeah, that, yeah. Was a, I that think, was a good movie. I think that was my introduction a, as well. I think Goodfellas is the first movie I saw of his, and just immediately hooked. the The opening scene is yeah, yeah. That's for as long movie. as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Like with, yep. with the narration starts, right? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I love that. I love that too. Because upon rewatch, after watching that, it's like. I think even Bill Burr said it on one of his podcasts because he was like rewatching. He's like, "This is like the fiftieth time I've seen it," and I just noticed this that scene with the trunk and them killing the guy, the stabbing. And yeah, stuff. you notice how it's got a red tint. To yeah, it? yeah. It's I'll, like at that point, Henry's life just—he is in hell now. Uh huh. It's very point. symbolic. Everything before that, he could have got away with. And yeah. Didn't have to go, Scott. You know, didn't have to be a rat or anything. But yeah. at that point. Boom! Everything that was like the that's when action. they got slo- Yeah, it was getting sloppy, yes. and it was the point of no return. Oh yeah, my God. oh, and that's wow. why Pesci's character at the very end shoots him because at that point it's just like he's in hell, and then the devil comes and shoots him, and then close the door. End of the movie. It's fucking beautiful. It's also an homage to an older film when uh, Pesci's character like shoots. At, oh, at the, at, the, at the end, I yeah. love that. It's, oh, it's great. See, there's so many like choices in yeah. this movie like you watch some of these shots and they're not um you know traditional or some of them mm-hmm. they're just like choices like yeah. distinct choices that make this movie that are, are were chances like yeah it's great and and a lot of the dialogue especially with goodfellas and casino it gives off a lot of ad libs and stuff like that like pesci his character in both films how like, unreal is joe it's, pesci oh my god and it's cool too cuz i think his first collaboration with uh, scorsese was actually raging bull and you can tell that his acting is different in each film 100% so he did raging bull he did goodfellas casino and irishman yeah i think my favorite is the irishman because yeah. your favorite performance, performance. From pesci working with scorsese because there's this expect- expectation with his characters that is always, always, always aggression. It's like, fuck this, fuck yeah. that. Yeah. Irishman, he 
is the most quiet character. Yeah. And that's what makes him the most creepy. Yeah. Creepiest. I remember yeah. watching it for the first time, The Irishman, and I thought he was going to have a moment where he snaps. I thought, like, you know, De Niro's character, somebody was going to do something to Joe Pesci's character, and Joe Pesci was just going to snap and reveal his side of him that we hadn't seen in all movie. And it never came. Mm-mm. Also, I'm still, like, wrapping my mind around that whole, yeah, he's in hell, and then Joe Pesci's shooting. Yeah. It's I'm like kind of <laughs> like purgatory. It's essentially like the good fellows at that point. It's like everything after that's purgatory. His drug addiction, his uh, his escapades, his like all that stuff. And even when like his buddies are like, you, you got to stop seeing her. You got to go back to her. Yeah. You got to do that. You can't be you can't be being a fucking rat and stuff like that. And he doesn't listen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It leads him to being a nobody. Being a person that no longer is himself no. anymore, he he could he calls himself Henry Hill, but he, he should just change it to like any person in life yeah. that has not amounted to anything. Yeah, man, uh, that, that movie is heavy. Gotta, gotta love the mafia. Man, life. that movie is <laughs> heavy. <laughs> you like just blew my mind. Your yeah, Christian will see it when he's when he's editing this. Like you can see my mind actually break. Yeah, another because like Scorsese does that a lot with uh, Raging Bull because that's. Another movie based off of a real life person, Jake LaMotta, the boxer. Mm. Yes. And I always remember that scene where he's fighting, um, I think, Sugar Ray. Yeah. And there's a point where he's not even fighting the guy. He's just like, hit me. He's just hit taking him. Stuff like that. It's such a religious sacrifice to him. He's like, you know, come on. Like, wh- what's what's more, what's one more hit going to do to me? Yeah. And then at the end of that, he's getting pummeled and stuff. And the last thing he says to him is like, hey, Sugar, or, hey, Ray, or whatever. He's like, you never knocked me down. You never knock me down. And something about that, it's like, it fucking hits you in a, in a different way. He just has, I mean, when we talk about Scorsese, like so many powerful scenes that yeah. we all have engraved into our heads that we could just pull up, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think he's really good at that. I think he's got lots of classic films. Oh, I mean, yeah. his highest grossing films are number five, Gangs of New York. Yes. Um, which to me is, is um, I, I, I like was Gangs it, of New York. It's not one of my film favorites. with DiCaprio? Um, let's see here. He, I believe he it is. Young. Like DiCaprio would have been like twenty five, I think. Twenty. Yeah, I, I I believe it is. And then the next film he did was Aviator with DiCaprio oh, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, Gangs in New York. Then number four is Aviator. Mm. Number three is Departed. Oh, love God, Departed. Yeah. Departed. Nicholson. Number two, Shutter Island. That's a good one too. And number one, Wolf of Wall Street, which yeah. is wow. It's kind of crazy because I'm looking at the numbers, the box office numbers, and it's like Scorsese is such a recognizable director, and uh, the highest grossing film he's ever done made about close to four hundred million. Yeah, three hundred ninety-two million. But you know what I noticed is that it's not about how much money you make out of the film. No, it's even not. Scorsese's talked about it. It's it, that's the least favorite part he he thinks about in the industry. I mean, he's a guy who's like for the art, exactly. Right? For him, it's just like I just want people to be creative and not just the filmmakers but the audience because if the audience doesn't feel creative then we're losing touch of our own like artistic merits and i just it's 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 nice when filmmakers have that attitude still you know so yeah all these films are great yeah i think he like i think he has lots of great films i think he does have some misses he has a lot of credits yes. i mean some he didn't direct some some he produced he's done a lot of producing as well so yeah. Yeah. i think the ones he he directed for the most part, or I mean, classic. Yeah. I would say, like, out of the directors from that era, he's been the most consistent, even post seventies. Hundred percent. Like you, I can name a film I loved from each decade he did from the seventies till now. Till now, which is yeah, which is unreal. Oh yeah, jeez, like, which is unreal at, at his age that like we're still so excited about mm-hmm. a, a new Scorsese movie yeah. coming out. Oh yeah. I, I know. I, I don't know if you guys have heard of like Killers of the Flower Moon, oh which is going to be his I, next. I did not yeah. wait for that. Never his next um, yeah. Scorsese film. That's uh, DiCaprio and De Niro in that one. Yeah, mm. he's bringing back both of them. The recurring recurring stars he's worked with. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of want to jump into that too. Yeah. Who do you guys think has the better filmography with Scorsese, uh, DiCaprio or De Niro? I think there's an argument for both, but I'll I have I have my yeah. choice. It's I'm Robert De Niro. De Niro. I'm saying De Niro. De Niro it's well. Robert De Niro. De Niro, yeah. and and I think it's because this might sound like a bias, but I, I'll stand by it. It's because they grew; they're more the same age together. They know yes. more about each other. And man, De, De Niro's performances, his best are when Scorsese directs him. A one hundred percent. Raging Bull. Oh my God. Yeah. The scene where Raging he's Bull. like punching the wall yeah. and is like, oh, I've never. I've never felt that 
aggressive isolation type of performance until I saw that. Like, that's when it really hit me, like, holy shit. And it's not even just that performance. It's even Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver is my favorite. Yes. Uh, I want to say it, Taxi Driver is my favorite. And the story with Taxi Driver is I saw it after I saw Joker for oh, the first time. So I watched okay. Joker for the first time. Yes. And, you know, I was watching lots of videos about it and, and stuff because I, I was re- like, it really stuck with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everyone's saying, oh, it's an homage to Taxi Driver. It's an homage yes. to Taxi Driver. Mm-hmm. And then I watched Taxi Driver. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. It, it's like, it's almost the same film. Yes. King of Comedy and, and Taxi Driver are definitely Joker's biggest inspirations, that film. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. wow, what a powerful film, Taxi Driver. Yep. Great score. I love that that ta- that theme that plays. Did you hear about the, the composer of that film? No. It was uh, Bernard Herrmann. He was a uh, classic composer from like even the Hitchcock era. And uh, that was his last song that that was his last track that he composed before he passed away on no christmas way. day i believe of 76 so r.i.p that, that legend he was a fucking legend i i don't I, I don't know the full story of it all i know is that was the last thing that he like composed completed officially and then what a way to go yeah, yeah. with such an iconic theme he did psycho he did like all wow. those classic hitchcock films and then he worked with i think scorsese and de palma in his later years and then yeah just overall great track track record it's um, it's unreal that we're talking about a director that has classics from the 70s and classics from you know his, his most recent film 2019 irishman i, I yeah. consider to be a classic did you guys like irishman i loved it because i think there's a lot of there's a lot of like controversy around that film like people some people really don't like it i i've heard complaints of the runtime which i get a little sad about because it's like i love yeah i i, I i'm fine with uh, a length that's beyond three hours if it's well deserved if yes. it's warranted and it is in this film 100 yeah. percent. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what i mean it's like i i, ne- I never felt bored at all at, uh, no. like there's always moments in the film that kept me going and you know i would say the one complaint i would have with irishman is technology wise <sighs> i'm sorry but I de niro know. cgi face you don't look 35 and it's man. a it's kind of a, <laughs> a tragic story about like how the, the film was supposed to be made like in the early 2000s mm-hmm. and de niro and scorsese were both like to, uh, both already assigned to the project yes trying to get funding and they couldn't and they couldn't so it just got shelved for so many yeah. years and if we got in the early 2000s maybe you wouldn't need all that yeah you could have just you know what i mean they could have just true. played it with some makeup yeah, and then like De Niro just looks a little too old. like the scene where he's stomping the guy Ooh. outside the store. I'm yeah, like, yeah, that oh like a razzie? man, Razzy. Well, no, no, it was, it didn't get a razzy, but it was just like the worst scene of the film. It was yeah, like it the just, way yeah. there's they small stuff that, double. that takes you out of it. Yeah. yeah, it's just small stuff that takes me out of it. Yeah. You guys like did it really bother you? The uh, like the it CGI? didn't bother me, but it I definitely was like, wow, he does every time he Pesci called look. him kid. I was like. <laughs> Tough. He I know. Older you guys are the same age. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I know. But um, that's like me calling Nevis kid. Yeah, like Nevis is older than. He's like, hey kid, how's it going? You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it it did take me out of it at times, but I mean, the story was definitely one that's worth telling. Oh yeah. Some of the performances to see. I mean, to see De Niro, to see Pacino. Pacino. Every time you see those guys in the same film, it's crazy. Yeah. Pacino. That's his first film he worked on with Scorsese. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Long overdue. Right? Oh, Unreal fantastic. that there was nothing, no crossover there. Yeah. It just made sense, right? Yeah. How good is that scene? 15 minutes. 15 anything minutes. more or anything more than that is disrespect. disrespect. Yeah, <laughs> you're saying something. Like, how, yeah. about, how about 12 and a half? <laughs> yeah, so right in the middle. Right in the middle. Like, you, you're more than 10. This you, is how you, you dress to a meeting? What are you saying? <laughs> oh. yeah. no, I, I love that, that scene uh, all the time. I love that scene where he's like, oh, shit. Just like I predicted. They fuck up Cuba. <laughs> Booby starts coming after me in the union. <laughs> that and uh, his whole, uh, I am sitting in a room full of fucking idiots. idiots. I think one of the best uh, Pacino performances in, in recent years, for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he, he really gave off that emotion, especially his relationship with um, Frank Sheer and De Niro's character. Yeah. Oh, my God. I still think about... Um, that's another thing. I Rewatching The Irishman, you know that scene where um, De Niro's character is a soldier and he's telling his story about... Yeah. The soldiers well, digging yeah. their own graves and stuff like that. Uh-huh. He's saying that story to Pesci's character. And I, well, th- what I realized is that their relationship begins because of that story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in a way, Pesci is the reason why De Niro's character digs his own grave. Mm-hmm. Think of it this way. 
what does he do because Pesci told him to at the very end? He tells him to kill Hoffa. Mm -hmm. At that moment, not only does he dig his own grave, he is living there in limbo until yeah. his last days in the nursing home. Yeah. And that really fucking haunts me because it's just like the end is just him lonely in a room. To me, it's leaves. like the because most not realistic. Even, not even religion can help yeah. him at that point. To me, it's like the most realistic portrayal of the consequences of the mob life. Yep. yep. And you know, at times it's it's glorified in some of these movies like Casino. Right. Good, right. Like there's always a downfall at, at the end of these these yeah. gangster flicks. But that one, you really walk away like, and oh my a, God. There's a yeah. lot of movie after he kills uh, Pacino anyways. Like there's like, yeah. it's like a good 20, 30 minutes, isn't it? Well, at that point, I think... Uh, he gets arrested and put into jail for how I don't know how many years, and yeah. <laughs> it's because of the car, man. Yeah, he says I like that car, but yeah, he just says it in a more regretful I, way I, I, I love because that of car. that because of that fucking that, car. That nursing home segment at the end is just so powerful to me. It's like you don't know who Jimmy Hoffman. But I really do feel cheated that I didn't get to see that movie in the theaters. I will say that. Yeah. And how do you guys feel about that? Like, I'm, I feel if Netflix way. was the only way that he could get it funded then good because it's i'd rather watch this movie on netflix and then not watch it at all yeah at least like because at least with zack Snyder's justice league there was a global pandemic going on there was no global pandemic going on when irishman dropped no it did cost a lot of money though that's true it was but like also, and, like yeah. i don't understand how scorsese cannot get a blank check for any film that he wants to make we're talking about martin fucking scorsese. martin fucking yeah. Scorsese. who can if not him like it, it's hard for me to believe that yeah. he's like has to sit shelf a movie for ten years to get funding, yeah. with this cast attached to it, and with this kind of story and this director, like uh, it seems like the perfect storm. I don't know how it could fail. Yeah, yeah. it's it's weird because like yeah, The Irishman was in development hell, and um, thinking about other directors, I think the only directors that have been able to fund and reach that amount of like status to the point where audiences are watching because of the director is like I can only name two. It's Tarantino and Nolan. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones. And they're younger than Scorsese. So I have this weird feeling that people are focused so much on them because their films are more recent. I yeah. agree. Tarantino is like 90s. Nolan is 2000s when they first started. Yes. Scorsese's been here since it's like... It's 70s. Yes. Or even I, before. Yeah. And it's kind of sad that I think it's because I was thinking people, that too, yeah. I was thinking like Nolan could get could probably get a blank check any oh, yeah. any movie it could be yeah. the most confusing plot because he like, made the dark yeah Knight. it could he be the dark Knight. exactly yeah you got the guy that made pulp fiction give him the money well, yeah you have the guy that made taxi driver you have and the Goodfellas. guy that made wolf of That's wall street I mean. shutter island like yeah what, it, good fellas like uh, give him what, money give him money exactly let him do his thing it's we're gonna like it yeah we're gonna love it yeah we're gonna love i'm it. actually curious um because nathan you talked about um, some duds that he had. Well, not duds, but not the greatest. And I'm I'm curious which ones you you think are not the the greatest. Have you guys both seen Aviator? I I no, tried. I it's a long one. It's a hard one for me to. I I watched it um kind of recently, maybe like a year ago for mm -hmm. the first time. Yeah. I I can't say I I enjoyed that one too much. He makes it's it, again like it's it's very Scorsese. Like he makes a lot of choices in that film. Yes, and it works really well in Goodfellas when he makes those those unique choices. Mm -hmm. And to me, in this film, it some of those choices took me out of it, and I kind of think that that one is a miss. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, was, mm -hmm. That's the biggest one in in recent history. I, I can't say I've watched all his filmography because there's I mean there's 37 credits here. I think the yeah. silliest one that he's directed. Although I still like it, but the silliest one is Cape Fear. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've seen, yeah. Holy I've seen Cape Fear. Holy shit. I rewatched that again, and I'm just like, this film, there's moments where it's like, that doesn't make any fucking sense, but he's having the time of his life. Because yeah. it's like, De Niro is so crazy in yep. that film. He is like, he is cartoonishly psychotic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that I just, the climax of the film with the boat and mm -hmm. stuff like that, I'm just like, what the fuck? It's, it's great, though. I, I like that he took a less. Uh, darker approach because I think that was right after Goodfellas he directed that. Yeah, that's so. um, yeah. There's there's one in between that he has a credit on. I don't think oh, he directed, shit. but okay. Um, I think he produced. Yeah, that that one's pretty good. What what about you, Josh? Do you do you, do you ever? What's your least favorite Scorsese? Well, film? the thing that's is, the I hardest question because I haven't seen a lot of his movies. Mm -hmm. Like I have yeah. not seen as many movies as you guys have seen because mm -hmm. I haven't seen The Aviator. I mean, I could probably count on my two hands how many films I've seen of him. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I, I honestly think I'm the wrong person to ask that. I mean, obviously, I've seen Shark Tale. I think that's the worst movie he's ever touched. He's ever touched. touched. But directed. That's, a, that's more voice, yeah. yeah. Directed, I, I can't say. I don't think I've seen a bad Scorsese film. I'm lucky enough to say I haven't seen a bad Scorsese film. Fair enough. Not that he doesn't have any, just I haven't yeah. seen them. I liked, uh, yeah. Do you ever watch The Color of Money? No, I've never seen her. That one's a that one's a pretty good one. That was like That's Scorsese in the '80s. That starred Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. It was a sequel, actually, to a oh, film yeah, he Tom didn't Cruise. direct called The Hustler. It's about the pool games and stuff like that. Huh. It's a professional. And The Color of Money is like Tom Cruise is like a professional pool player, and Paul Newman, he's like the old guy. He's like yeah. trying to teach him his ways and stuff. And like, it's it's one of those rare occasions where Scorsese actually makes a sequel that he didn't direct the first one from. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. He he doesn't make sequels. Period. Yeah. Like, y- you look at this list. There's no. That's true. There's no number two attached to any of these films. Nope. Uh, it's. He, he, I guess he just likes original ideas, and that's something I admire because I think we need more of. Yeah. I am so tired of these yep. franchises getting beat to the ground, and you know, just um, put out there just for nostalgia because they they know the box office. Yeah, we'll we'll eat it up. But I I think Scorsese always comes with a unique idea, even though like I guess he's known for gangster pictures. Like that's what he's yeah, most known for. Yeah. Like, but then then you got like Wolf of Wall Street, which I think is is w- one of his best. is a, is a top yeah. three film mm-hmm. for Scorsese, oh, and that's yeah. not a that's not a gangster picture. And I, and to me, it has a completely different tone. And and uh, yeah, I la- I don't think I think in like an hour of the Wolf of Wall Street, I I laughed the, ma- the same amount of times I laughed during Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. Or something like some one of his other films. Like oh, there's yeah. a completely different vibe with uh, Wolf of Wall Street, in my opinion. There's so many good scenes in that film. Yeah, like when he's at the diner with all his friends and stuff, and they're just <laughs> Can I get off any track. Fucking catch up. They're off track. They're, everyone's off track. They're like, oh yeah, the nuns and stuff. And DiCaprio's like, so the point what? of this conversation is that nuns and lesbians. Like, what the, what fuck, the fuck are you, are you talking, talking about? about? You know? <laughs> Love that. Oh. Or like um, that scene where he's like, no, I I I didn't fuck my cousin. I, uh, oh. <laughs> 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 Jonah yeah. Hill's character. Well, you How do good is Jonah Hill in that kid? movie? So t- if, the, if my kid was like that, I just you know take it to the to the yard <laughs> and just let be free. <laughs> and DiCaprio's like, no fuck. Like, <laughs> That's really D- Jonah show Hill is. Show me to check. I'll quit my job right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, Paulie, how are you? No, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, listen, I quit. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. That's probably one of my favorite performances. From it's classic. Jonah Hill. Yeah. Damn. Speaking of performances, let's talk about what do you guys think is the best Scorsese character? Character to come out of one of his films. That's a that's a good one. That's such a hard one to me. I mean, Joe, we already listed like Joe Pesci has like three classic ones alone. Then there's De Niro. Then there's you know DiCaprio. It's it's a real hard one for me. Yeah, Mm. I think Um, um, for me it would probably be I want to say Frank Sheeran just because of how many like layers. It is deep. Just like. The amount of emotions he's trying to balance and throughout the film and like how everything shapes uh, the path he chooses to take and everything. I don't know. But that, uh, I, I'm still going to think about it though. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Nevs? You know what? Because uh, he recently passed away. One of the great performances, uh, Ray Liotta's Henry Hill. Man. Yeah. yeah. Ray Liotta's Henry Hill is. I he, could see there's, a, there's a scene, that, the, the parts where he's like completely drugged out of his mind. He looks like he hasn't slept in days. Yep. So insanely real. Holy shit. The scene where he's looking up at the helicopter. Yep. How insane is that scene? Yeah. That, that the always... pacing there, it just makes you, yeah. it just makes you anxious yeah. as a viewer. Yeah. Like the second half of that movie, I get a feeling in my stomach. Yeah. Like, I almost don't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Because like, you just get anxious just, for the I, characters. I yeah. just like, because the, the rise is so exciting and fun. Yeah. And then you just get that, that feeling in your stomach. You're like, oh man. When he's asking Polly for the money. Mm. I know. Holy shit. That guy, he looks like he's going to break in like seconds. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What about, what about you, Nathan? <sighs> it's so hard. I, I think the most fun character is Joe Pesci in, in Goodfellas. Yeah. That's the most fun character. Most it, fun. Maybe most not fun. the deepest, but quotables. Yes. Quotable. Well, I would um, say for me, it would be Joe Pesci in Casino. Casino. Really? I like him more in Goodfellas personally. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a similar character, yeah, exactly. if, if we're being honest, right? I just I, think he has more quotables in, in, in Goodfellas. For me, it's that, just that scene. In I the love desert. the scene where they're, they're, <laughs> they're eating with Martin Scorsese's actual mother. Yes. Yeah. That's so classic. And he's like, the hoof, the hoof got caught in my 
You know what my favorite part about that is? It's Ma. It's a sin. His, his, mo- his mom just like pulls out the painting out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, I it's love like the painting. painting out right now. <laughs> like one dog goes the other way, the other dog goes the other. Yeah. What the and fuck does that mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> and this guy's looking at me like, what do you want from me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Henry, what's the matter with you? You don't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what's the matter with you? You don't talk too much. And I just love that that, like I didn't know the first few watches that that was Martin Scorsese's real mom. Yeah. His dad's in it too. How amazing is that? Yeah. Is no, that yeah. a fisherman? No, it, he was, I believe, one of the the cooks. And remember that famous scene where they're always walk. doing the razors. And he's stuff? cutting oh, the yeah. cutting the onion. I yeah. love the so jail sequence. Oh, is his dad, oh, is his dad like, the one that's like puts too much onion? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, the you way put those... too much onion. It's like, I didn't put too much. I put two two small onions. Three small onions. Three, Three small onions. onions. How many cans of tomatoes? <laughs> two cans of tomatoes. You don't need that many onions. The way those guys live in jail. That's such a good sequence too. <laughs> yep. So many parts. I mean, yeah. could talk about Goodfellas for half an hour. Never mind Scorsese's filmography. Like yeah. it's, it, it's, it's unreal. Martin Scorsese is an absolute legend. Yes. Uh, we hope to get many more movies from him. Yeah. And I mean, I'll, I'll watch them all, whether it's on Netflix, Hulu, in theaters. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm there because it's Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll wrap up with uh, our top three. Top three. Top three. <sighs> I, oh, I go first? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, my top three. Top three. Number one, Goodfellas. Yeah. It has to be number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, Wolf of Wall Street. Yep. Number three. God, it's so hard. I yeah. feel like I'm disrespecting some of these films. Like, yeah. you know, it's. Don't, it's, don't, uh, think, don't think about that one. Don't <laughs> think of it that way. For, you're asking yourself for three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean the other ones are bad. Number three, Taxi Driver. That's a good. One. I love Taxi Driver. Just had such a big impact on me. Yeah. On first watch. So. Fuck. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to think this. Uh, one is Goodfellas. Two is probably Raging Bull, and three. I think I'm gonna go. Fuck. It's so hard. Uh, like, what doesn't make the list? These are you all know what? Hot take: Shutter films. Island. I'm doing Shutter love Island. Love that. Yeah. yeah, love the number choice. One of that for me one. is probably Irishman. Yeah. Uh, number two, Goodfellas, definitely. Number three, that's a tough one. Right. Yeah, it's hard. Let's all get the tough third one. Let's see. What, what else? Hmm. Shark Tale? No. Don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number three is probably gonna have to be a Casino for me. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's but, solid. Again, I, I have a limited, uh, there's only so many Scorsese films I've seen. Like, I've seen Taxi Driver. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually like it that much. That's another conversation for another day. Oh, shoot. He's looking at me like Joe Pesci right now. I'm like, <laughs> what? Um, dig a hole. Time for me to dig a hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking at you like you're spider. 50, 50. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I do intend to continue watching more. It's just, you know, I've been trying to watch so much shit recently. Fair it's enough. hard to watch a lot of uh, three-hour films. Yeah. But uh, yeah. How are we feeling, boys? Martin Scorsese. We're pretty good. We love you. Love you. We're going to watch Scorsese. all your films. You're one of the few filmmakers that has this passion still, even 50 years, over 50 years of directing. Yeah, well, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Real Light, Real Late Night Talks with the Three Bros. Yeah. Right, if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, check out our Instagram, check out our TikTok, and check out our Twitter. Follow Nathan on Instagram. And if you want to support the channel, check out our Patreon. All that being said, we'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out. Peace Peace. out.